What's up everybody, Jared here with CarBuzz.com and I am bringing you an in-depth walk around of the new 2023 Nissan Z. That is right, there is finally a new Z car. The last time that there was a new Z was like 2009 when the 370 launched. So this is a really big deal, so let's talk about it. Now, I'm not going to be driving the car in this video because drive impressions are currently embargoed, as is the price of this car, so you're gonna have to wait for my upcoming video. I'll have the embargo uh, time in the description below that you can check out, but without further ado, let's start walking around this really, really gorgeous car. So, Nissan says that they wanted the styling to harken back to past Zs. So, you can see a lot of elements from the original 240, especially here in the headlights. Now, they aren't circular like they were before, but Nissan says they kind of styled it to look like the covered headlights and kind of the refraction off of said covered headlight from the 240, which is a really cool feature and I, I happen to love the way the headlights look. We've got this very square, very wide grille here that I've heard a lot of people say they are not super fond of. I happen to think it looks just fine. I don't see any problem with it. And the reason why the grill is bigger is because Nissan needed a lot more cooling because the engine is now twin turbocharged. We apologize for the audio discrepancy here. We had a little bit of issues while filming, but I promise the audio will only be different for just a little bit, so please bear with us. And I'm going to talk about the engine here like I was originally in the video. It's a 3-liter twin turbocharged V6 engine, produces 400 horsepower, 350 pound-feet of torque. Nissan says that should get you to 60 in around 4.25 seconds, about 20% quicker than the old 370Z. This is actually the same motor that you get in the Infiniti Q50 Red Sport and Q60 Red Sport. Um, so it's a lot more powerful than the 332 horsepower engine you used to get in the 370Z. Now also in this video I'm going to show you two different trims. This is the performance trim that we're looking at. This is the nicer and more expensive of the two. But we also have a base sport trim over here. You're going to notice immediately that this has smaller 18 inch wheels and those wheels come wrapped in slightly narrower tires compared to the 19s. So a little bit of a more basic look, but I, I still think it looks plenty sporty even with the 18 inch wheels. But as you'll see, we've got these dark gray, almost black 19 inch wheels here on this performance spec model. We also have larger four piston brakes up front. You can see the red caliper there. The wheels are also forged. They look really good. I think the other wheels look pretty good as well, but these look even better and they're 19 inches uh, compared to 18 there on that base model. So they've kept the same basic shape from the 370Z, which is not a bad thing. Uh, it's kind of like the old school Corvette where it was a long hood uh, with the engine at the front and then you have this really sleek uh, back end that curves down. Oh, again, a lot like past Zs, like the 240, 280, even the 300 ZX. It is a hatchback too, which I, I like a lot. And then back here, you can tell there is inspiration, especially these taillights from the 300 ZX, the Z32 model, which is probably my favorite looking Z car that Nissan has ever done. So really cool there. We've got these dual exhaust um, that is really nice coming from that three liter twin turbocharged V6 engine. And I will show you that trunk as well. We've got our new Nissan logo um, and it's like hollow here on the bottom. So you go ahead and click that and that's gonna go ahead and pop this trunk. We've got this little spoiler here um, that you get on the performance trim that you wouldn't otherwise get on that sport trim. But let's go ahead and lift her up. You can tell that the trunk is massive in terms of its uh, width and the amount of space. The only thing that intrudes are these big hunches right here, um, right where the, like, the wheel arches are. Um, so these do intrude into the space quite a bit, but this is quite large for a sports car. You can get a lot in there. Uh, just like the 370Z, the area is very shallow though, so you can't really fit 
a lot vertically. You can't stack things very high. And I really do think this car needs like a cargo net. I think you can probably get it. That's probably what these hooks are for. Because if you have something very large, like a suitcase back here and you're driving very spiritedly, it kind of <laughs> slides and you know, your cabin is right there. So you don't want things projectiling over to you. Um, but the trunk space is pretty good, um, not gonna lie. So let's go ahead and open her up. So we've got these door handles um, that are kind of flush with the body. I think they look really cool. This is how you lock it using the keyless entry system. Now, you're gonna notice that a lot of the stuff in here is carryover from the last generation 370Z, which in all fairness was actually kind of a carryover from the 350Z. So you'll see we've got these air vents on the door that connect. So there's the actual vent right there. So when you close the door, it forms like a seal here and then the air comes out of that vent. That is something that Nissan's been doing ever since the 350 debuted in like 2002. Um, so a lot of this interior will feel familiar to you if you've owned a 350 or a 370Z in the past. They say the seats are redesigned. Um, they've got some new stuff to them. They're a little bit different um, than what you'll get on the sport trim. I'll go ahead and check that out a little bit too. But I wanted to show you um, this uh, performance trim. We've got some really nice seat color options. You can do this amazing blue. That's super crazy. I love the blue seats. They have a black and red seat, and then they have an all black seat. And if you get the Z Proto, which is like this special edition model, there's only 500 of them, you can get black with like a little bit of yellow accenting. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and come over here and show you what the seats look like on the base trim. And we're gonna talk about some of the differences as well, because I feel like that's important. Um, let me just go ahead and open up. I'll give you a quick tour here. So these are cloth seats. Um, it's a little bit of a different seat than what you're gonna get on the performance model. Um, but as you can see, it is all cloth here. It is a manual seat. You get a powered seat over there on that performance model. And you also get a smaller screen, uh, eight inches. And we're gonna go ahead and check out the other model over there, which has a nine inch screen. So let's go ahead and come back to the performance because this one has the nicer interior. So I think this is the one you guys will want to see for now. Um, I should also mention there is some storage behind these seats. Not really sure how you would get to it though, because uh, there's no quick way to like fold these seats down. So that's a little bit annoying. We do have the same, like I mentioned that there's a lot of carryover buttons. These seat controls are pretty much the exact ones that you would get in the 370Z. Although I'm a little sad to say they got rid of the ventilation function. We do have heated seats on this performance model, but no ventilated seats. Um, so that is gone. We do have a cup holder here, just like the 370Z did. I think that's in the same spot, but Nissan says they added, if you pull back this armrest a little bit, you get a second cup holder. So no more fighting over the cup holder, Nissan says, which is quite nice. We've got Bose speakers here on this performance model. You get a little bit of a lesser sound system over there on that base sport model. Now let's go ahead and step on in. Let's see, I'll get a wide angle here. Turn down the exposure because we're sitting in a garage right now. And I'll go ahead and start it up. We are in the six speed manual model. So foot on the clutch, foot on the brake, starting it up. So this is the six speed manual transmission model. I am not at liberty to say what the pricing is just yet on these, but I can tell you that there is going to be a nine speed automatic transmission as well. Unfortunately, that car over there that I was about to show you that also had the manual. So I'm not going to show you the automatic in this video. If you look at like the, the shifter that like a Nissan Rogue has, it's pretty much that. Um, so every Z, no matter which one you get, is going to get this awesome, I think it's 12.3 inch digital cluster. This is like the sport gauge. It's awesome. You get so much good information. You get your boost gauge over there on the left, tachometer right in the middle. Um, you get this awesome shift light here that's gonna uh, tell you exactly when you need to shift, which is fantastic. Oil temperature, water temperature, oil pressure, diff oil, like it's, it's fantastic. I really love it. You can change it if you don't like the way this looks, which I think I would just drive with the sport mode on all the time because it looks so great. But if you wanna have like navigation or other stuff, this is your normal uh, display. You can see the gears are gonna appear there at the bottom. So when I go ahead and shift into the first, there you go, you're in first. Now I'm in second, third. So I do like how they kept that uh, from the 370Z. And now that it's like this, now I can, uh, uh, cycle through. I have my trip computer, tire pressure, like more relevant information if you're not like driving spiritedly. And then if you so choose, there is a third version as well. It's called enhanced. So if I scroll 
down to that. So now you see the tachometer and the speedometer get pushed way out and all of your um, main information becomes like most of the screen. Um, so, you know, it's similar to what you'd get on like a Nissan Rogue or a Pathfinder or something like that. They really didn't even change the graphics too much, but that sport gauge is fantastic. Uh, so I mentioned that we do have a nine inch screen here. We do have CarPlay, Android Auto. It's pretty similar to what we'll find in other Nissan vehicles. I love that there is a physical volume knob, a physical tuning knob, physical home buttons down here. It makes this very, very easy to use. We do have climate control that's automatic, and I believe it's automatic over there on that base sport trim as well. So you can either turn it up, now we have like manual fan speed, or you just turn it over here to the auto setting. You'll notice that these switches straight out of the 370Z. And again, I really wish I could tell you pricing in this video. Unfortunately, I am forbade by Nissan to talk about it, but I will let you know that because of some of these carry over bits, the dashboard is kind of the same. The climate control buttons are kind of the same the door handles are kind of the same that let Nissan save a lot of money in the development cost and I promise you you won't be disappointed when you finally do find out the price now another feature I want to point out that I loved from the 370z are these gauges up here on the dash we have our volts we have our um, turbo uh, speed and our boost pressure gauge those are super cool to watch as you drive along so happy that Nissan kept those here. Uh, it's just a really, really cool touch that keeps this more modern cabin also looking somewhat retro as well. So I really do like what they've done with the cabin here. I will say that the materials, like especially the uppers and some of the suede and stuff like that, it feels nice for a Nissan, not quite infinity quality. It's kind of like a midpoint between there. It's definitely a premium car to say the least, but the Supra does have a nicer interior. Um, the Supra obviously shares all of its interior components with BMW, and I will say that I think their interior is a little bit nicer, but as you will wait to see when I give my full driving review of this car, you'll see that um, the price may reflect the um, little bit lower quality of interior, but overall, I'm very impressed with the design. I'm pretty happy with the interior. I love that they kept the large trunk in the back, and I gotta say, uh, this is going to be a very eye-catching car when people see these out on the road. They come in some great colors. You already saw, even in silver, it looks quite nice, and then that red, that red looks phenomenal as well. So stay tuned for my full driving review of the 2023 Nissan Z coming soon. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe, smash that subscribe button, and ring the notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. I'll see you next time.